Welcome back to my channel. In today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is when the right one comes along. Now, we're going to be doing mainly the Nashville version of it. There was the original and a load of covers since then, but the Nashville one seems to be the most popular uh, version. Now, there's two um, versions of the song in Nashville. You have the solo artist playing it in the uh, pub scene, and then you have the duet playing it in the wedding scene. So, I've looked up plenty of covers, duets, and singles, and I think I've put together the best way of playing it if you're a single musician trying to play and sing. There are more difficult versions for the verse and the bridge if uh, you want to play as a duet where you're mainly doing the guitar part and you have a vocalist with you but if you're trying to sing and play it's very hard to do a lot of the intricate um, finger picking pieces so I do the full normal intro but then for the verse part it's a little easier uh, so that you can sing along with the actual song. So let's get into it we'll start off with the intro of the song. So what you're going to need is your capo on number two, um, just to stop a load of the harder chord changes. So if you put your capo on number two, it takes away a lot of the extra notes you have to hold and you can actually hit open strings instead. And it makes some of the chords a lot easier instead of C sharp minor and different ones. We have B minor chords that you're more familiar with. So for the intro part guys, we're going to start with our first finger on uh, five on the B string. Now I'm using my capo on number two just to make the chords a lot easier. Um, you can take it off and play it without the capo or you can move the capo up or down um, depending on what your vocals are like, how high your range is and um, how comfortable you are singing in that range. So um, for the original one uh, it's in capo 2 so I just keep it in capo 2 so it sounds very similar to the original but when I'm singing I actually do it in a capo 1 or capo 0 because I have a lower bassier voice so I sing it without a capo. Um, right, so we're going to start capo 2, we're in box 5 and it's 5 slide 7 on the B string, 10 on the B string, then it's 7 on the E string as well and you're going to strum the bottom 4 strings, then hit the D string, the B string, now your first finger is going to cover the uh, 4 bottom strings in box 7 and you're going to strum the D, G and B string or pick them. So when you strum, sometimes you hit that bottom string and you don't want that to ring out. So I do pick this usually, but you can strum it. Then you lift off your fingers, you hit the D string, 3-5 on the B string, B minor chord and strum. Then your fifth string, so the A string, 5 on the B string, so that pinky just goes down. And then G. Now this is an open G, it's not a bar chord G or using all four, it's called an open G because you're only using your three fingers. A lot of older musicians or some people that like to mess around with the seven um, will play it like this. I just play it like this. So it's the A string box two, top of the E and bottom of the E, that's your open G. Then you pick the top string and you have a two hammer on four on the G string, use your first finger or ring finger and straight on to three on the B string using that middle finger. So from the G it goes. Then you're into that A chord for a strum. A bass note, so that's going to be your A string. Then down on the little E string, 2 0. Now, the next part is a slide, but before to do the slide, to do a very quick and cheeky bass on the A. So to hit that A string right before the slide. And then um, it's the D string straight away after. So it goes. And then finally to finish, it's a two pull off zero on the G string. D string. And then a D chord and you can strum the bottom four strings. And that is the introduction to the song. So the whole first tab starts off with the five slide seven, 10. Then it's seven on the bottom string, hold that 10 on the B, strum the bottom four. D string, B string. And then seven, seven, seven. Open on the D string, 3, 5, B. B minor strum, A string, 5 on the B. G open chord, bass note, then your hammer on and the B. Then your A chord strum, 
A string, bottom string 2 0, then your cheeky bass note with the slide D string, then your 2 pull off 0 on the G, D string, and D chord. And that is the intro. Let's get into the verse. Alright, guys, for the verse of this song, what we're going to need are a few chords. We have the G, D, B minor, and A, but then we also have E minor and F sharp minor. If you know those chords, skip ahead to where we get into the playing of it. If not, I'll show you them really, really quickly right now. So we have G, which is your second box A string, third box E, and then third box B and little E. For A, it's all in your second box, the D, G, and B strings. D chord, second box, G and little E, third box B. And then we have your E minor, which is the second box, A and D. Your F sharp minor, all of box two. And in box four, it's the A and D string. And then for B minor, it's all of box two as well. Box uh, three, B string, box four, D and G string. Okay. And they are the chords. Let's get into the playing of the song. So we have picking and we have strumming. So for the original song, they have two verses, a bridge, a verse, and a bridge, or the chorus, if you want to call it that instead. So it goes two verses at the start, and then, and then it goes into the chorus. So for the verse, there's four lines in the verse. Now, for the first verse, you're going to pick. For the second one, they start to introduce a little bit of strumming to it, so it goes. Okay, so I'm going to show you both right now, how to pick, what's the best way to pick, and how you can make it different, and then the strumming pattern, uh, how much beats are in each chord, and how you can uh, make a strumming pattern from it. So we start off with the picking. The first chord is G. Now what I always do is pick the bass note. So the bass note on the G is that lowest note top string on the G, and then I pick um, the D string, G string, and B string. That gives you a low or middle sound. Now you can keep your bass note where it is, but move your fingers down the string to the G, B, and E strings. It gives you a higher sound. Especially if you're going down into a D, so from G to D, D all your fingers are down. Um, so it gives you a nice uh, change from the G to D if you already pick the high note. So that would be the bottom strings, the G, B, and E. Because even though they're on the bottom of the guitar, they're the highest notes. So we have G, the top string, and then you can either do the middle strings or the bottom three strings. Then it's into D, and you're going to hit your D string as your bass note, and then the bottom three strings. There's no uh, switching on that one, you don't get to choose because it is just the bottom four strings. So we go from that G. Then your B minor, I pick the middle four strings. So your bass note's on the fifth string. And then again, you can either choose to hit the D, G, B or the G, B, E. So you can either pick the middle strings or leave your thumb on the fifth and hit the bottom three strings, depending on how you want the song to sound. So you can go or that. It's your choice. They're the two ways of playing it. I do vary it from time to time. Um, and then we are into a G chord again. Now I go low on this one because I went high on the first one, but again, you can stay with the higher strings or switch to the middle strings like I do. So that's the first line of the verse. It goes and that's the way I pick it. Second line of the verse is a little different. It starts off with that G and D the same. But now we're into an A chord. So you go into that A chord, you're hitting the middle four strings. So that's the A string, D, G and B. Then it has a little bit of a tab. So the easy way to do it is to come out with a chord and on the B string, do a two pull off zero, and on the G string, do a two. But the harder way and much better way to play it is stay in the A chord if you can. Hit the middle four strings, and then you hit the B string. Your middle, your third finger is already on the B string, so you just pick them and pull it off. And then you hit the G string number two, with your fingers already on. Now the reason this is more difficult is because you have to try move your fingers while also trying to hold the chord. But if you can do that, it'll sound a lot better because the bass notes don't fade away. When you change chords, the notes you were playing go away as well. So if you're hitting an A and you lift off your fingers, then the A chord's gone. But if you can hold them there and uh, play a little tab over it, then the chords will keep resonating true while you do the little tab. So I play that A 
and the notes just keep vibrating through um, and lasting until I go into the next chord. So that is the second line. The third line starts off the same way again, G into D. Now we're going straight into B minor from here, but uh, it gets a little bit different. So from B minor, I hit the middle four strings, your A, D, G, and B. Lift off your first finger so your bass note changes. So that goes one, two. Now, instead of doing a G chord, I use a G bass, uh, bar chord for this one. And I hit the top string and D, G, B. Then I slide back into my F sharp minor and I hit the top four strings. So that's your E, A, D, G. Then I'm back into my E minor chord and I'm gonna hit the bass note and then the middle four strings, A, D, G, B. So that's the bass note. One, two. Then I go down into my A chord, I'm gonna hit the A string, the D string, and then the bottom three strings together. So it's A string, D string, and then bottom three together. And then my D chord, and I hit the bottom four strings. I do a little bit of a tab here. I um, do the same as the end of the intro. So I pick the first finger, on the G string, pull them off. So that's a two pull off zero on G, the D string, and then back into D again, first strum. Now in some covers, I've seen people um, putting their pinky up onto the fourth on the D string, just to give them that extra note as well, to finish out the verse. And it's nice and easy, if you do have the dexterity in your fingers, I would do that to finish the chord out and just do a little strum. So the very, very last, um, two lines of the verse, it goes G, D, and then B minor, one, two, G into your F sharp minor, then your E minor, your A, your D, or D, and then you can strum from there and just adds that extra note. So that is the verse of the song. You do that to, um, for the very first verse. Then for the second verse, we're gonna introduce strumming. So the strum pattern is uh, down, up, down, up, and then you're changing chords straight away for the next down. So it is a very, very fast chord change for this one. Um, it goes from G into D. Now together they add up to be four beats, but the first chord itself is one and a half beats. The second chord then is two and a half beats. So it does add up to be a four beat bar with the two chords, but it's not gonna be two beats and two beats. It's one and a half and two and a half. Plenty of songs are starting to do this. It's where the first chord is like a waltz timing. It has that one and, and then the second one goes two and three and. Um, so it does kind of fill out a bit and the best way of doing it, the full strumming pattern, would be down, down, up, down, up for the first chord and then down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up for the second chord. But um, what they do is they vary a little bit. They leave out some of the strum. So in the first one, instead of down, down, up, down, up, they go down, up, down, up. So they give that little bit of a pause, a little hesitation. Down, pause, up, down, up. And then you're straight into the next one for down, up, down, up, down, up, down. They don't come back up again for the final up, they leave that, just so it gives you time to go into the next chord. So the two chords together, the G and the D, are gonna be fast, but then you have a little bit of time to get into the B minor um, chord afterwards. So the strumming should sound like this if you copy their version, it goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then B minor into your G chord. So it's, it's very sweet and nice. Now the next one, it starts off the same G into D very, very quickly. Now A. So what you do is one strum, and then strum up, and you, end, and you um, try and do that tab part as well. So it goes down, pause, up, and instead of down, up, it does your two pull off on the B string and two on the G string. This is where staying in the chord is very useful. So it's down, pause, up, and then you skip the down and it just goes into the up, down, up, down, up, down. So you put that uh, third finger back on after you pull them off, put them back on, go into the full A and finish out the end of the strumming pattern. So we are missing, I'll um, put in brackets here, the part that you're skipping on the A chord. So if you look at this drum pattern here, the arrows that are in the brackets are now going to be your tab part. 
Okay, but everything else is still strummed. So it's down, pause, up, tap, up, down, up, down, up, down. And that's the second line. Third line, uh, G and D are the same. Then, for your B minor, into the bass change, into your G, into your F sharp minor, it's going to be a little bit different. So it goes down, down, up. Just one B. Down, down, up, down, down, up. And then your G, down, down, up. F sharp minor, down, down, up. And then your E minor, down, 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 up. So that's a full two beats from part. Down, pause, down, down, up. A, down, 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 up. And then D for the full thing. Okay, so that was the easy way to do the last section. The harder way is to change the E minor and the A into the uh, one and a half and two and a half beat. So the E minor will go down, up, down, up, A, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, D, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, so the easy version is to do two beats on E minor and two beats on A. Down, pause, down, down, up, A, pause, down, down, up, down. Okay, the harder uh, version is to do the one and a half beats on the E minor and the two and a half beats on the A, which is the full strum part. And we learn down, up, down, up, A, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then the D. And that is how you do the strumming verse. Now, you can do the picking verse into the strumming verse. You can do the picking verse into a picking verse, or you can do strumming into the strumming. It's up to you. There are just two different ways of playing the same verse, same chords. Um, one is just picking, one is strumming. I like to start with picking and build into the strumming because the bridge, the chorus that comes next is um, strumming, right? So <clears throat> let's get into this next section. Okay guys, in this section there is one new chord you're going to need and that is G minor. Now if you've been doing the G bar chord, then all you have to do is remove your middle finger. If you don't know how to do G bar chord, you're gonna to have to need it for this one. It is all of box three and four. It's in the fourth box, it's your G string, and in the fifth box, it's your A and D string. Now that's G bar chord. If you wanna make that a minor, just remove your middle finger. There it is. So again, guys, I'll leave a link in the description to um, the video I did on how to play 48 chords with just three bar chord shapes and how you can vary them around so that when you are learning new chords in a song, you're not stuck, you can actually use that knowledge to find out uh, how to play these chords for yourself rather than constantly looking up more tutorials, much more tutorials. Take that knowledge, use it, start to use it straight away. So the link's in the description, just um, take it, it will help you. It's a little bit of a long video, there are some uh, theory points in it, but if you know how to use the information, it's invaluable. Anyway, so we're in that G minor. That's the new chord we're going to need for this song. And it actually starts in that G minor. Now it goes G minor, D, G minor, and then D, C. Um, now the D, C at the end, I'm going to explain that. But first, the G minor, D, G minor, do the full strumming pattern um, the whole way through. So G does the whole strumming pattern, full four beats. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. D, same thing. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. G minor, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, the D. So what you're gonna do is D for two and a half beats and then at the very, very, very end, you just put that third finger up to the um, A string number three. Your pinky is gonna take over for your third finger in that D, so that you get a D with a C bass note in there. Okay, so that D goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then you switch, down, up, down, up. And you can hear that little uh, tone change in the bass note. Your bass note is no longer the D, it's the C, so it's a, a note below. Um, and that is how you do the first line. Let's go into the second line. So it starts off with a B minor this time. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. From B minor to F sharp minor, it's very easy. Just remove your middle finger and put your uh, second, third finger up a string to the A and D. Full strumming pattern. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then into E minor, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then the uh, last A is the exact same as the A from the second line of the verse. You're going to do down, pause, up, then your tab section, and then the rest. Okay, so I'm not going to explain that A again, it was in the verse, if you forget how to play it, go back to that uh, verse section. I do leave timestamps in the description as well, just click on the verse, skip ahead to the second line and uh, you'll see how that A is played. 
down, pause, up. Okay, and that is the course then goes back to another bridge and then another course to finish, guys. That is it. That is the whole song from intro to outro. And it's just a very sweet, lovely little um, tune to play. And uh, now the capo, capo 2 just helps you uh, sound like the original and play it the way they do but because we did the easy chords and on capo 2 we can actually now vary uh, the tone of the song so if you have a lower bass your voice like me I don't sing it with capo I go really really low with it um, but you can then mess around with capo and go up and down so if you can't sing with the original song it's a, if it's a little low I know in some duets they do sing a higher because they have a female vocalist you can actually put the capo up higher and then you can sing higher or you can do what I do and take it off completely but let your vocals go an octave higher so instead of being really low there's no music you can go higher than that there's no music there's my capo gone so um, depending on your vocal range and what you're comfortable singing in um, it is a very relaxed song, so I wouldn't try and strain yourself too much of this in a power ballad or anything like that. So just uh, find a tone that suits you nicely, that you can relax, sit in a chair, play along with it and sing the way you like. But guys, that is it for me. Leave comments below, let me know what you thought of today's video. This was a request for one of my uh, private lessons that I do. Um, thanks for sending it in. And guys, I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you next time.